Francis Chan recently titled a message that he gave. If Jesus were the pastor of your church, you probably wouldn't go. And, of course, the title of the sermon alone was more catchy than any Time magazine uh, headline or any newspaper article I'd ever seen. So I watched it, and, and you know, Francis um, has always had a way with words, of, of a way with laying things out the way that it is, the way that's honest and true, and, and I personally believe the way that that Jesus would have would have um, would have wanted it to be said, that he would have said it himself. So this message is in no um, way, shape, or form to simply regurgitate everything that Francis said, um, and I probably couldn't. Well, I know I couldn't do it as well as him anyway. But what I want to what I want to say is what is church? First of all, what is church and, and and who is Jesus? I mean, we we know by tradition, we know all of these things that we've heard. Um, we know this habitual thinking pattern that we've put ourselves into of setting the alarm for 9 a.m., being at church, you know, by 10, and... Um, focusing on where we're going to go to eat. It's the same routine. Eat, church, sleep, repeat um, on a weekly basis as far as a Sunday. You know, we're, we're in this, we're locked into this mentality that we, we, we forget who Jesus really is and, and what the church really is supposed to be. The church is not supposed to be a place where we go and a pastor makes us feel better about ourselves um, by telling us fabricated crap that's just not true. Um, you know, Jesus put it out on the line, and he he was so real, and people followed him. He said, if you're not w willing to pick up your cross and follow me, then you will not you know, then you don't deserve the kingdom. Not deserve, but you will not inherit the kingdom. Because as we know, none of us are deserving of the kingdom. He says, if you don't pick up your cross to bear your burden, and we've talked about this before, you're, you're not worthy. I don't want you to follow me. You'll give up at the first sense that anything gets hard. And, you know... Jesus put it on the line the way the way that to me at first it was offensive when I when I was hearing these things and I'm like you know and some of you may feel that as well but the more I was listening to it I was like man this is real this is real stuff that we're talking about you see if we're always told fabricated or sugar coated things or, you know, messages that aren't completely realistic, then we're never going to grow as a Christian. If we have these things, you see, we cannot love Jesus as much. We cannot love our possessions and our, our worldly desires as much as we love Jesus. If we do not pick up our cross and follow him, but we take our cross and drag it behind us towards the direction of everything else in our lives, which is cars, money, relationships, what have you, we'll never grow in Jesus. Now, does that mean you're going to hell? No. Um, I, I strongly believe that those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. But what I'm saying is, is that we need to get past the surface and understand that he that Jesus has called us to be the salt and the light of the world. Think for a moment of the church that you go to. See, in Acts 2, we hear all about people giving the clothes off their back, giving to anyone in need. My bank account is your bank account, and the shirt I'm wearing is the shirt you're wearing, if you so choose. If you are in need, I will provide. People gave and gave and gave. And the reason they did that is because the messages were true and they were real. 
Jesus was not afraid of offending people. He was not afraid of standing out and being different. And if you don't believe me, read through any of the four Gospels and you'll see what I mean. Jesus was a man of courage not just because he took the weight of the world on his shoulders, but because he spoke with such a drive and such a passion and such a la He had no fear. He lacked fear and was completely filled with courage. He said it how it was and he didn't sugarcoat anything. So this is why Francis says, if Jesus were the passage, uh, pastor of your church, you probably wouldn't go. And many people did walk away from him. But do you think that bothered Jesus? No. I personally don't think it did. He he knew that he was on this world for a purpose and for a short time at that to complete this purpose and he didn't have time to mess around. And neither do we. We don't have time to mess around while we have certain parts on the world that are living between a dollar twenty five and two dollars a day, a large number. I don't have my statistics on me, but there's a lot of people that are doing that and and we're focused on our cars and on our clothes. And it's it's totally unlike the church to, to to pull into a parking lot and, and to see things going in, in the direction that they're going. You see, back to my thought on thinking about your church. If if you were to look to your person to your left and and they and you needed the shirt off of their back, would they give it to you? I mean that's such a cliche phrase, I hate it. But would they give it to you? You know, maybe, maybe not. Would you give you? Would you give them your shirt? And I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about a life or death situation. I'm just talking. I'm just simply asking. Would you give them the shirt off your back? You know, some people will answer you. Well, if it was a life or death situation, but I'm not asking if it's a life or death situation. I'm asking, would you give them the shirt off your back if they needed it? doesn't have to be life or death. If they needed it, would you give them the shirt off their back? The church is a bond, as Francis says, deeper than any family bloodline or relationship. And we still have this separation. We have this separation of the congregation by status or you know, by, by a multitude of things. And, and I just think that it's not the way Jesus wanted it. And I, and I speak in general of the world and society in America. I speak in general because in China, there are people in underground churches that if you say, oh, well, I switched churches because the worship band here sucked. So I went to another one where the worship band didn't suck. They would laugh at you. If you tell them, some of them, that you do not get shot at and you are not persecuted for worshiping God, they wouldn't believe you. That's how bad it is. See, we get caught up in this time. We get caught up in this little capsule and, and we begin to capsulate everything. And we begin to put our whole lives in this one tiny space. And we forget that anything else exists. But the truth is, is that this stuff is real. What we know is fake. The real world is so much bigger than, than anything we can fathom. And I shouldn't say that everything is fake, but, you know, it just seems that way. It seems like when, myself included, when, when we walk through the church doors and, you know, we, we see... We see things in the scripture of the early Acts 2 church, and then we see things that are actually taking place in the the American church, and we see these things, and it just does not it just does not match up. So what do we do? I'm gonna wrap this up because I want to make it under ten minutes. So so what do we do? We begin living as the gospel proclaimed us to do. We pick up our cross. We love Jesus more than anything and we'll follow him at any cost. We put others first. We even care about other people more than we care about ourselves and we will do anything to see that their needs are met. That is the church that will turn all of this around. All of it. Thanks for listening. Until next time, have a good day.